So I'll start with a Brexit question and we'll, we'll, we'll build to, to, to other topics. Do you see a landing zone around level playing field between the EU and the UK? Can, can you see conceptually how it is possible to, to shape a deal on the level, level playing field? Yes, I think so. Uh, provided uh, Mr. Boris Johnson is a bit clearer on what he means by uh, Brexit in economic terms. We know we have a political Brexit. What we don't know is how much of an economic Brexit will we have. And by this, I mean that within Europe, we've removed borders a bit of time ago, at a time where we decided we would exercise the same level of precaution among us on safety, on security, on people's digital rights, on pesticide residues, size of bumpers, uh, diplomats for nurses, and the rest. So it's a big integrated ecosystem, a big omelette, in a way. And getting uh, the UK eggs out of this omelette is inevitably complex. So how much does the UK want to diverge is the real issue. And the fear on the EU side is that UK would exercise a level of precaution which is below the European one, this, thus impeding normal uh, free trade and trade flows. So the, EU, the EU wants to know where, when, how much will the UK diverge. And of course, this is a question which is a hard one in UK domestic politics. Yeah, I mean, otherwise they could run into the kind of problems, the EU could run into the kind of problems that they currently face in terms of huge digital players. And I want to ask, um, especially in light of the lockdowns, Pascal, that are closing all of the brick and mortar stores or at least reducing the amount of revenue they can possibly hope for, um, as consumers do all of their shopping via Amazon and Google, how does the EU, uh, you know, France has made a lot of noise about this, especially recently, deal with the taxation of these big tech uh, behemoths? Well, I think uh, it was a question already there pre-COVID. And given that COVID has uh, projected us five to 10 years in the future on the speed of digitalization, it's even more a question now. These uh, big tech digital companies have gained market share. Uh, and the fact that they don't pay taxes or very little, which was a problem before COVID, will be even more of a problem after COVID. This is not just a European problem. This is a problem everywhere. I think this new model, this new digital economy, which, as you said rightly, is different from the traditional brick and mortar one, uh, should pay taxes like the rest of the economy. There is no specific reason why they would be exonerated. OK, and with that in mind, do you expect France, th to, though, to, to hold off on imposing digital sales taxes at the end of the year whilst we wait for a more global solution, something coming through from the OECD? Is that the right forum? Absolutely. I think that's correct. Uh, the EU is trying hard to work within the OECD to get a internationally agreed new set of rules that would lead these companies to pay taxes. If this moves, fine. If this does not move, then the EU has kept the right to do it by itself in order to, in a way, show the way after having tested the goodwill of others. I wonder who you think, uh, well, I won't ask who should be supported as the next WTO director general, but what should the priorities be, the top priorities in, in such a changing world, Pascal, for the incoming WTO director general? Well, I think uh, we know the name of the incoming uh, new uh, DG uh, WTO. 
the only question is when will the U.S. Uh, unlock uh, this name <laughs> and remove uh, the veto uh, Mr. Trump had put on the one that has been elected. This is uh, one thing. Uh, I think short-term uh, uh, Mrs. Okonjo uh, should uh, be a bit like a sort of a kinetherapist, relax a bit uh, muscles and nerves who are a bit uh, tightened, and then move to the big question, which is reinstalling a proper conversation, negotiation, trust to move forward between U.S., EU, and China on one main issue, which is re-leveling the playing field with China. This is the number one issue. There are many others, but this is the one where a change in the U.S. administration, moving from an extremely aggressive position vis-à-vis -vis China to something which would be more proposing China to adopt new rules and negotiating them would be tested. I think this is the challenge number one of Ngozi Okonjo. What is the level playing field priority then for China, Pascal? Well, the problem we have with China uh, and, and many countries on this planet have this problem, even if only US, EU, Japan are sort of big enough uh, to stick their neck out of the window, is that 30 percent of the Chinese economy is under state command. And competing on the domestic Chinese market and with uh, Chinese competitors on the international market who are supported, subsidized by the Chinese state is something that needs to be disciplined. It's a bit like, you know, what we have within the European Union. We have state aid disciplines that prevent some countries to debalance competition in supporting, subsidizing some companies, and which, by the way, is one of the issues that we have uh, in dealing with the Brexit. The, the situation is the same worldwide. You have a large international, big global market. Competition has to take place in fair terms, and China has to recognize that okay. more disciplines are needed. Otherwise, Trade will not remain open.